All right, if you don't mind, I'm going to finish a joke that I started telling at the beginning of the quarantine. Okay. Made it through day 11 in quarantine. At least I can catch up on my vacuuming. First time I've ever actually used this. It was my grandparents. Looks like a table saw. How is everyone? This week we are staying inside because it is pouring rain. You can't tell right now because of the calm in the air, but uh, it is torrential downpours, thunder and lightning. And I know for a fact that as I'm recording this, you do not have any power. So far I do, we'll see. So what you are going to do to finish off this process is to take four of your nine thumbnail sketches that you did last week and turn them into more detailed final drawings on a larger scale. As you're working on your final drawings, you may call upon some of the drawing techniques that we worked on during the remote learning phase, such as mark making techniques and even some of the negative drawing techniques as well, using a paper towel to blend. If you do have access to color, whether it be colored pencil or marker or paint or anything of the like, you're welcome to do this in color. I'm actually going to wear gloves while I do this demo because I was working in the yard all day ripping up shrubs and planting new ones and flowers and my hands are totally dried up and destroyed so a close-up on my hands tonight would be horrific. Uh, let's face it, this is not the strangest thing you've seen me do on these videos. So cool. These were actually a gift from the class of 2012 on the occasion of our second class play together uh, back in 2011. Um, and I still wear them. I wear these a lot. What the heck? These are children's gloves. I've set up my four three by three squares using a pencil first and a ruler, of course. Uh, but then I ended up inking them so that that way if I need to erase during the drawing process it won't affect my panels. I, I added a quarter inch gutter in between. Um, if you're using the sheet that Mrs. Giuliani provided, if you're able to print that out, that's done for you. Uh, but if you're penciling this out yourself because you don't have a printer, I would recommend ruling out a gutter so that that way it gives you a clean presentation and we're able to see the four separate images in a clean manner. So to begin this process, you need to refer back to the sketches that you did last week. Mine, as you remember, were on a giant sheet of newsprint so that you could see them. And uh, this paper has seen better days because shortly after I pushed stop on the camera, the wind took the paper and I had to chase it across the neighborhood. So here it is, tattered and uh, destroyed. Speaking of destruction, I'm actually going to cut my thumbnails out so I can visualize what they're going to look like together. So out of these nine, you're going to select the four that work the best. And I already know which four I'm going to use. So now what I want to do is take my four thumbnails and decide upon an arrangement for them that is going to showcase them in the best, best possible light. Uh, I'm not going to place these two side by side because in doing so I would have dominant man-made items up at the top and then I would have natural uh, elements and landscapes down on the bottom. And I, I kind of want a uni holistic unity between the, uh, the four squares. Uh, this, by the way, I'm realizing you probably are looking at, even on the first week's drawing and saying, what in the world is that? Uh, these are three kind of pine trees that were uh, up on a hill. There's a shadow cast on the ground here. All these light sections, those are actually like the, uh, the formations of the, uh, the pine needles. Um, I can see it, you maybe can't. All the black spots, those are shadows set within. If I had done this in color, it would have been much more clear. Um, so I'm gonna figure out a composition here. I've got a diagonal coming in this way. This tree looks like it presents a little bit of a wall, so I might actually like that exactly where it is. We got a diagonal here, there. All right, so I am going to tape these together and demo over.
Good night. No, just kidding. We're gonna draw the whole thing. Ha. Huh. Uh, this is the this is the formation that that I would uh, that I would select uh, because I like that I have architectural element here, architectural element here, uh, nature, nature, nature. This is pointing us down here in terms of flow. I also like the idea that the faucet seems to be producing the water here and the, uh, the trees here bring us down into the center of the composition and you have the hydrant which kind of hooks you in through the chain and um, uh, serves as kind of a barrier pointing up there. All right, so that's what I like, and that's what I'm doing, sticking with it. So I'm gonna put these three aside for now, and I'm only going to focus on one at a time. Now, if you're thinking in terms of budgeting your time, you might set a stopwatch for yourself. Each of these drawings took me about 10 minutes to, uh, to produce last week's uh, phase of this, 10 minutes per sketch. Uh, that brings us at about 90 minutes worth of work. So right here, if I know I have four squares and I've got about two hours to do it, two hours worth, worth of work a week, um, we're looking at about 20 to 30 minutes per square if you wanna be right at two hours. I'm thinking in terms of my simple shapes. On the bottom here, this is essentially a cylinder, so I gotta watch out for my pinched ellipses. I gotta make sure that I have a logical form there. It is so tempting to just go back outside and do this from life all over again. Uh, so some of the burden here is remembering the logic and the form of the actual object that you're drawing. So some of this I may have generalized a lot and uh, I'm forced to kind of remember or make sense of my, remember the form and make sense of my drawing. I'm not holding it like a toothbrush this time around. I'm just lightly sketching this in. All right, so there's my preliminary drawing. I'm just going to take my kneaded eraser and soften some of this. Um, if you have, if you don't have a kneaded eraser, which you probably don't, you could just gently press your eraser end down on your drawing. And the purpose for that is just to knock some of the commitment back um, so that you can allow your ideas to progress a little bit more uh, more gradually. I'm really only applying the darks here at this stage because I have other tricks up my sleeve for the other tones. There's a story I often tell in drawing and painting about my final assignment junior year in figure drawing. We had to we had to draw the model or our friends or anybody we happen to see um, just in our sketchbooks. Um, it was a very, very vague assignment that I didn't understand at all. Um, we were supposed to be just be drawing people in poses uh, in our spare time. And ultimately, we were going to take all of that research. I didn't realize it was research at the time. We were going to be taking all of those drawings and then turning them into a final drawing as if we had a model seated in that seated or standing in that exact pose that we were uh, we were then submitting as a final and I struggled through that entire process so much um, because I just didn't understand the assignment and you know what I also didn't ask any questions so uh, go figure if if at any point you have any questions about this or any process please email either myself or Mrs. Giuliani. We're more than happy to, uh, to assist you. Um, uh, for that college assignment that I was just speaking of, I, uh, I now understand it because essentially that's what you're doing here. You did these sketches outdoors and now you're basing your final drawing off of nothing other than your initial research. So it really places the importance on your uh, primary, you as a primary source in terms of observation and relying on your, your own eyes as opposed to the eyes of a camera because on that assignment in college, we did not have access to, to cameras uh, in the sense of we weren't permitted to use them. It wasn't allowed. Um, I'm not saying we didn't have cameras, of course we did. We just weren't allowed to use them. Uh, so, 
it's really like studying for an exam. You you live or die by the amount of studying you do. And if you didn't study, you're you're just there to sweat it out on exam day. Um, so basically, I'm taking a test right now. And last week here, I did my studying. So it's essentially an open notes <laughs> drawing. This drawing is an exam, and it is an open note exam. So I better have taken my notes appropriately. All right, so now what I'm going to do is come back in with a paper towel and essentially use our negative space techniques that we did, the negative drawing techniques, in order to um, soften some of these darks and also embed them into surrounding midtones, which I hope to create right now. Now on the on the negative the negative object drawings, when I reviewed them, the comment that I kept writing over and over for the ones that worked, um, in terms of like fully realizing the process, is that the highlights glisten. If you're if you're utilizing this process to uh, to your full advantage, you'll end up with the illusion of these highlights really glistening. I realize right now I'm taking kind of a lot of care to just keep myself on the shadows, but I'm actually going to spread this out pretty pretty quickly just to establish a little bit of atmosphere in the background. So now what I want to do is uh, bolden some of my darks and also recall the the techniques from uh, from a few weeks ago with hatching, cross hatching, scumbling, stippling, that sort of thing. Now I remember the the handle here had some very, very strong texture. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to go in and pull out my strongest highlights and get that glistening effect that I was talking about a moment ago. It was a sunny day here. Of course, on the video, you have the luxury of going back and looking at the actual object. I'm not going to be able to do that until I put this into my computer and start editing and see how close I came or how far. So lucky you. I can kind of get some of these areas darker by adding in hatching lines to really, really amplify the darks. Um, but they're kind of set on top of the scumbling marks that I just put down. So I get a lot of mileage out of the hatching lines, but I also have the benefit of the texture created by the scumbling lines. Now ultimately, I don't want to end up seeing any, uh, any outlines on this. So I've got to kind of tell my story using Shading, light and dark, and midtone. I have to think about why I'm seeing what I'm seeing, understanding the form. I hesitated a moment because I was trying to figure out what's causing the shadow. It's the back, it's the thickness of this rim. I saw a lot of outlines on the, the last several drawings. You can define an edge with a line, but then just soften the shadow uh, so that it's pulled inward. Um, that'll create the illusion of three-dimensional space as opposed to a cartoon. And this is coming from a cartoonist, mind you. Like, I'm not anti-cartoon. Uh, you don't want it to look like a cartoon because that'll diminish any life and structure that you can bring into, into the object. So we're trying to capture reality. We're trying to capture subtlety. All right, and there you have it, the final drawing. I did end up erasing around the border just to ensure a crisp presentation. And you can see some of the detail there. I will undoubtedly notice more flaws with this the longer I look at it, but it is certainly an improvement over the original. So that's all for this week. And as far as this channel is concerned, this may be the end of season one of Remote Learning. As always, please continue to practice social distancing and wash your hands. Keep yourself and your family safe. The bell!